If you've got an EV and you can charge at home, it makes the whole experience so much easier. But what about people that can't charge at home? Obviously, we all know that infrastructure has to grow quite a lot, but is there something we can do in the meantime? Let me show you my road. So that's our house. You can see most of the houses here do have driveways going all the way down there, but there are flats down here that don't. And there are cottages up there that don't have any off-street parking. So this is actually a fairly typical semi-rural English road. 56% of the homes in the UK have driveways and this road is pretty close to that, I think. So if someone wanted an EV on this road, what could they do? Maybe they could talk to the council to put in a charger. Councils do do that sometimes if they get enough people wanting one. You could go to a rapid charger. The nearest rapid charger to me is three miles away, same as the petrol station, in fact. But rapid chargers tend to be very expensive. And obviously it's not as convenient as charging at home. When you think that so many people have driveways around here, maybe there's another option worth exploring. This is my EV charger. Since we charge at night, most of the time when electricity is so cheap, this is kind of sitting doing nothing most of the time during the day. Wouldn't it make sense to rent this out to people who need it? Well, it turns out there are some apps for that. This is an app called Juice Up. If you have an EV charger at home, then you can rent it out to people who need it. Or if you don't have a charger, you can find them on here, usually charging much cheaper than you would do at a public charger. So the benefit of an app like this, if you're an EV driver, you can find more chargers cheaply. And if you are someone that's got an EV charger, it means you get an income because you obviously rent it out to people that need it. So it seems like a bit of a win-win situation, really. And there are other apps available that do this kind of thing, but I'm going to focus on Juice Up for this video. So here's the app's home screen. Obviously at the top you've got find a charge point, that's pretty big and bold, but uh, you can search any city or postcode, or you can also click on view nearest charge points. So as you can see, there's a couple kind of near me. Just below that, you can see that there's an add charger button. So when you go to add charger, you put in your address, of course, that's the obvious stuff, isn't it? Whether it's attended charger or not, it feels quite old fashioned, an, an attended charge. Like, would you like me to put the cable in for you, sir? but uh, I quite like that. We wouldn't do an attended charge if we were putting our charge point on because we're antisocial, but uh, you could do it. You can select all the features you've got, like covered parking, CCTV, which we have, lighting, which we have, Wi-Fi available, yes, disabled access, yes. So all of that is good, and the more descriptive you are, the better. Our charger is untethered, which means people would have to bring their own charge cable. So that's something you would write on there. Obviously, as a host, you can charge whatever you want for your charger but it does make sense to not go too expensive with it because you want it to be cheaper than public charging. You want people to actually use it. If you are a host, there's no commission, so juice up, don't get anything. PayPal have a payment processing fee, so you'd have to pay that, it's not very much. But other than that, the only fee you have to pay to juice up is the subscription charge, which is free for the first year you have the app. And because it's PayPal, you get payments immediately. You don't have to wait a few weeks for a payment, you get it immediately if you're a host. As you can see, the process is pretty simple. Quite a nice feature on here is a calculator. So if you're a user, you might want to know how long you might be. So if you've got a calculator, you can select your car, which you've already added in the setup of the app, uh, your charge level, and then target charge level. Let's do that. Calculate. So that gives you a good idea how long you're likely to be. So that's the home screen. You've also got obviously the map. And as I say, you can search for anywhere in the country. You've got a calendar to show you if you've got any upcoming bookings. An inbox so you can chat with hosts back and forth. And then of course your profile. The same app and the same login works for both a host and a user. So you could download it as a user and then you could be a host later, for instance, when you get an EV charger. So that's really good. So let's pretend for a moment that I can't charge at home. Let's use Juice Up to find a charger near me. And there's one in a place called Littlebourne, which is fairly close to me, and it's got a lovely walk uh, where I like going with the dog. So let's go there. Click on Littlebourne. We've got some information here. It tells you what the hourly rate is. So it's three pounds an hour. There's a minimum session fee of three pounds. And the cost per kilowatt hour, that works out to 41 pence. So bear in mind that, for instance, if I was to go to Connected Curb, there's a Connected Curb charger around there. That's 50 pence per kilowatt hour. So this obviously works out cheaper. Uh, there's also information here about what kind of charger it is. Bring your own charging cable because it's untethered. Uh, if I go to parking, normal access, three meters, block drive, blah, blah, blah. Availability, eight to 11. And it even says that there's Wi-Fi available and lighting and good access. 
for the disabled there. We can add a favorite, which I'll do, and view on map and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to book a session like that. Um, select vehicle. So I've already added this on the app, eNero, and we're going to check availability. We're going to do it now, just an hour will do. And um, I'm probably going to be there about two ish, so we'll select two. And then we go to save. And if all that looks good, and it does, I'll go to book session. Success. So that's now been submitted to the host. And if we go to showing calendar, you see it's pending at the moment. So that's all there is to it. And it says how much it'll be, so it's just going to be three pounds. All you have to do then is just wait for the host to approve it. And there we go, look. booking approved. Okay, so I'm here and I'm a little bit late, but luckily you've got 15 minutes either side of your booking, so that's not too much of trouble. So I've gone to the Juice Up app and there's a big green button that says start session. So I'm gonna press that and it says ready to start charging. It's due to begin. Uh, you've got to pay the fee first. So that's fine, pay to start session. That's going to go across to PayPal. So there we go, payment successful. And now I'm going to plug in the car. Okay, it's all charging, it's all looking good. So I'm going to take the dog for a walk while it's not raining. So apps like Juice Up seems to be kind of a win-win situation for me because we need loads more chargers everywhere but with about 60% of the people in the UK having a driveway loads of those people could already have chargers and you might as well rent it out if you're not using it yourself so hosts earn a bit of money and people get potentially cheaper charging and more convenient charging perhaps because I'm sure there's a lot of people that live near someone that already has a charger so it's kind of a no-brainer really Given that that's a chair there, I'm guessing this isn't supposed to be quite as waterlogged as it is. Beautiful though. We've been walking for half an hour and I kind of realized that this session should have been longer. One hour just isn't enough, but luckily you can extend the session and juice up. You just have to go to extend and then you just have to wait for the host to agree it. Okay, so the time will be up kind of soon, so if the dog will stop eating grass, we'll make our way back. Okay, time to unplug. So the whole process seems pretty simple, really. I think it works really well. But something like this only really works when loads of people start using it, both as users and hosts. I think it's a great way of potentially earning some money and it's a great way of improving our infrastructure because let's be honest, our infrastructure does need a bit of improvement and waiting for the government to do anything about it will be waiting a long, long time. So this could be kind of a quick fix, really. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos. And I'll be back very soon. Bye for now.